Alright, this is part 4 of the redstone calculator tutorial. So far we've made a screen, we've made an input system where we can switch between A and B, type in any number on the top and bottom, and we'll have those two numbers resembled in binary, two 8-bit numbers, one for A and one for B on the side over here. So now that we have our two 8-bit numbers ready to go, all of our inputting is done, and now it's time to actually do math with them. But before that we do that, we have to make it easier to get these outputs out of here because it's really hard to reach these right now. So what I'm going to do for that is just build out um, a little bit more of a staircase for the ones that aren't connected to anything. Just so that we can take an easier output, I'm going to take an output from this column right here. Once you've done that, it should look something like this. I also replaced these lamps with just normal blocks because it's going to be way easier to just put lamps right here now. So put lamps on this column and then also repeat the entire thing for the other one. Alright, so now that it looks like this, what I'm going to do is, since this is our A number, I'm going to pull it out like this and just give ourselves some room. So just make this line go past the uh, edge here and stack this seven down. Make sure it doesn't mess with anything down here. Okay. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for B. Take this entire wall. Copy. And paste. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make B come over here to A. I'm going to stack maybe 15 or so. Okay, let's do a little bit more. 20. And you want it to so that they are that there are two blocks in between them. So in my case, I'm going to have to stack this 22. And then of course, you will have to put um, repeaters wherever you need to. So now it should look like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this A line, stack it out by another two blocks. And then bring this, just sum them out this way. It doesn't really matter right now. This is just going to set us up for the future. Now go to the A line and on the end of this, go out and put repeaters here. The reason I'm doing this is because we want to make it so that B can go through A right here without actually interfering with it. So the way I'm going to do that is putting a repeater here and then a block here. And so now B can go through A without messing with anything. So just stack this for everything else. Stack 7 down. Stack 7 down. And then finally, just bring A down by 1. So just take, uh, put slabs like this and copy them like that. So 7 down. And now we have our inputs for where the adder is going to be. So now we just need to take the carry cancel adder that we were using in the previous episode and hook it up to those two inputs. And slash slash paste. And remember, these have to be the exact same signal strength coming in on these corners. So I got 15 and 15 because they're both repeaters right there. Uh, we want it to be pointing forward so we can eventually plug it into the display. So I'm just going to remove this part and then um, put lamps on my output so I can test it. So there should be nine lamps because we have eight bits and a carry out because when you have eight bits plus eight bits, you have a max of nine bits coming out. All right, so let's test this thing out. Let's put in uh, 100 and, I don't know, 107. Flip to B, do 93. So our answer should be 200. This is the 128 bit, 128 plus 64 is 192, 192 plus a 8 is 200. So perfect. We just did the first actual math with the calculator. Congratulations. So moving on to subtraction, uh, let's make the inputs for the subtraction. And now you'll see why this output is kind of useful because what we can do is just do the exact same thing we did over here. We'll take a out from like, I don't know, just go out from like here, do it with slabs again, and then make B go through the lines and again just have a space of uh, two in between them. So again A just drop down with a slab and B go through A so you have your two inputs here. Okay should look something like this and now let's move on to how we're actually going to do subtraction. The way we're going to do subtraction is through something called two's complement. Two's complement is where we represent negative numbers by inverting them and adding one. So for example if you have five which is 101 we would invert it like this, changing all the zeros to ones and ones to zeros, and then add one to it. So five 
through two's complement would be 0, 1, 1. The way we're going to use this for subtraction is by representing the second number, the B number in A minus B, um, in two's complement. So we're going to change B by inverting it and adding 1. And then from that answer, we will be able to tell what the, what the answer is from subtraction. So for example, let's do um, 6 minus 3. So 6 minus 3 we know is going to be 3, but let's see how we would do it with 2's complement. So we take the second number, which is the B number, we're going to invert it and add 1. So this is it when it's inverted, and then we're going to add 1. Now we take these two numbers and we add them, because we're technically adding negative numbers together. So this looks like it's 6 plus 5, and 6 plus 5 would give us 11 and 11 is 1011. So even though it doesn't look like it, we just did subtraction. Because what we did is we did 6 minus 3 and we got an answer of 1011. And I know it looks like 11, but really the first one doesn't meet is the is the sign bit. That's just telling us whether it's positive or negative. The only bits we care about from this answer is the same size as what we started with. We started with only 3 bits in length. So our, the only part we care about in the answer is the three bits in length, the 0, 1, 1. So 6 minus 3 is actually just 3, the 0, 1, 1. The 1 out front is telling us that it's positive. So let's do an example where we get a um, negative number. So let's just do the reverse. 0, 1, 1, 3, 6. So we're going to do the exact same thing. 3 minus 6, we're going to take the B number, which is 6 this time. We're going to invert it and add 1. So 3, uh, inverting a 6 gives us this. Adding 1 gives us this. Adding these negative numbers together, it looks like it's 3 plus 2, which would give us 5. Now, our sign bit this time is a 0, which tells us that it's negative. So we're not done yet. Because this is negative, we actually have to flip it back, invert and add 1 again to get our final answer. So remember we had 3 minus 6, so we should get a negative 3 if this is correct. So again, the 0 out, out front tells us it's negative, and the 101 is the, number we, is the negative number that we need to convert back so we can read our answer. So 101, invert, add 1 and you see it's 3. So our final answer is negative 3. So you saw in that case that we had to invert and add 1 twice throughout the process. So that means we're actually going to need two adders for this. Um, so I'm going to start by copying this first one. OK, so here's our normal 8-bit adder. Our A input is just going to look normal, and our B input is going to be inverted. So let's start with the B input over here. Um, to invert them, you're just going to want to put a torch like this, and then a repeater like this. And to keep it on the same level over here, just put something like this, and a um, block like that. So now copy this whole thing, stack 7 down, and now we have our A input going in normally, our B input going in inverted. And the last thing we need to do is we need to automatically add 1 to this answer. So I think you can just do that by cutting this out. And now the carry-in is being powered. And you should be good to go. So this is actually a working subtractor if you only get um, positive answers. So let me just take these lamps, expand 1 up, stack 7 up, and I'll show you what I mean. So let's get some levers. If we were doing what we did before, and we did, uh, what was it, 6 minus 3, we get a 3. And the 1 on the top tells us that it's positive. So there you go. Now we need to copy this and paste it in front of it so that we can use a second adder in case we need to. We need to when this is negative, because when it's negative, we need to invert and add 1 to the answer again. And I'll show you what I mean by that. If we have 3 minus 6, our carryout is 0. In other words, our sign bit is 0, and that's telling us that our answer is negative. 
And of course, when that's the case, we're going to use this second adder to invert this answer again and add 1. And you can tell that, so this is 3 minus 6, we would want negative 3. You can tell that this is going to be a negative 3. Because if you were to invert this, then this lamp is the, going to be the only one that's on. And then if you add 1 to that, well, now you have 1, 1, which is 3. Negative 3, which is our answer. So let's turn these off and then copy this adder so that we can use it again. So go out here, take a corner, take another corner, copy, go out by two, make it line up, because why not? Paste. And then if we're going to use this adder, it's going to be inverted. So just put a repeater like this and now copy this whole setup stack it seven down and we do need to add one as well but I think because we copied this adder this one was already adding one so this one is also already adding one so we're good there now we need to just control for which outputs gonna be correct and actually let's test if this is working so normally six minus three this one's going to be our correct answer, and it's going to be a 3, positive 3. If we have 3 minus 6, we have negative 3. Our second answer is the one that's correct. If we do 2 minus 7, we're going to get a 5, and our second answer is correct again, negative 5. So yeah, like I said, now it's just a matter of controlling for which one's correct. The way we can do that is by first getting rid of these lamps. Bringing this second answer out with a space and then a comparator and then another space and then another redstone like this. Stack seven up. And then you can stack this this way stack like 17 or so and that was too much stack 14 make this answer also connect to the line so you could probably just do that with a slab yeah um, if you want to be extra careful just put a repeater here and then let's hope this has enough strength 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 perfect so this is going to be our answer right here. And then chop this off. And stack this down. And now we just need to control for when we want to cancel this guy. So just make a uh, repeater tower here. Stack seven down. Bring this up with a slab tower. Put redstone on it. Now we need to think a little bit because when do we want to cancel this? We want to cancel this when this is positive. In other words, this is on. So this is already set up correctly. We just need to connect this carry out line to the cancellation over here. Um, easiest way to do that is probably just a spiral to be honest. I I think we have room for it. Yeah, just go right here and make a, uh, a downward spiral like this. And I'm gonna use the, I'm gonna connect the redstone live just so if we run out of signal strength, we know how to handle it. So continue to build down this yeah, see, right here. Just do something like that. And continue to... Whoops, build this down. Boom, 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 boom. Repeater here. Hopefully it reaches all the way up and it does. 
and you also need to bring out this carryout line as our uh, as our signal bit, and we're gonna label it as well so we don't forget what it means. So let's bring this out. Oh, of course, and then stack this part of the uh, of the output down as well. Stack seven down. So let's put a sign on this. If I remember right, one equals positive, zero equals negative, and then I almost forgot we also need to be able to cancel this line in the opposite case. So stack seven down, do the exact same thing, make a uh, torch tower. So I'm going to copy this guy's torch tower, rotate 180. slash slash paste and since it's just the opposite we can take a uh, we need a redstone torch and we can just take this signal and go like this and that hopefully no it doesn't reach all the way up we need to be one more block out and there. So this should be a working subtractor now. Let's try this out. Right now I have uh, 3 minus 7 and that is giving us a negative 4. Beautiful. Let's try uh, 5 minus 7. It should also give us a negative 2. Let's try 7 minus 3. This should give us a positive four and yeah seems to be working so just like before with the adder we can uh just copy this entire thing actually i'm going to copy it from right here I'll put the other corner right here And pick a reference point, slash slash, oh wait, I need to choose this one, slash slash copy. Uh, in my case, I need to rotate 180. And then over where the subtractor thing is, slash slash paste. And that was a horrible idea, and this is why World Edit has undo. Perfect demonstration of why you need to do slash slash paste dash A. Now we can test addition and subtraction at the same time. So reset it. Let's try 1, 23, minus uh, 2, 50. 123 minus 250 should be 127. And our subtractor gave us zero means it's negative 127. Perfect. One, 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 one. Seven ones is negative 127. And just for good measure, we can test if our adder is still working, which is this line right here. 123 plus 250 should be 373. One, zero, one, 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 zero, one, zero, one. I'm going to check that real quick. And it is correct. So now we have addition and subtraction both working. Thanks for watching.